Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Today I'm gonna to show you this tool, how we made it, what it's for, and why if you have a Bafang 750 watt motor, you just might need one. To me, this is super exciting because this little part is not made in Taiwan, it's not made in China, it is made here in the US in California. This is hopefully our very first part made in the US, but definitely not our last. The people that are in the Bolton Labs membership are already aware of this tool and have seen the progress up to this point, but now this is ready for production. We're actually making them right now, right behind the camera and they are going to be for sale effective immediately when this video comes out. First, let me show you what it does and why we had to make it in the first place. This is a 750 watt Bafang hub motor. And if you want to remove the freewheel, that's the set of gears that are right here, you don't have a really good way to do it. This is a standard freewheel removal tool. It doesn't fit over the motor plug here. And if you drill that out to where it fits over the motor plug, then you still have this nut here that it won't fit over. And if you drill it out even more than that, which is very hard to do without precise equipment, these freewheels, when they're tightened down onto these motors, basically every time you pedal, you're putting pressure on the pedals, you're tightening that freewheel onto the motor more and more. And if it's been on there a while, it can be really hard to get it off. This tool is one that I modified to try and get free wheels off and it didn't work. You can see that we actually bent the steel. The wall of the tool was just not thick enough. The other thing we've done is take a tool like this in the past and split it in half, actually taking a hacksaw, cutting it in half, and that way the two halves can slip over the motor cable and into the slot here on the motor. Problem that I saw with that and with freewheels that had a notch cut out is that there's a little bit of slop there. So if you have a freewheel that's really tight, those will slip, the tool will slip, your wrench will slip, something slips and it doesn't work. And I've had freewheels that we literally could not get off with those modified tools. So they would either break or they just wouldn't work. How could we do this better because these tools just don't work and to my surprise no one made a freewheel removal tool that is designed for a Bafang motor where it can fit over this plug. I took the DNP freewheel you see here, I took a Shimano freewheel and I started taking measurements and we tried to figure out is it even possible to make a tool like this that has a big enough inner diameter to fit over this, but it's not going to break when you wrench on it really hard. This is the end result. But before I get to this, let me show you some of the progress to get to that point. Obviously, this isn't gonna work. That was one of our first pieces that we machined. And in total, there were actually probably closer to 15 or 16 different revisions. But here's ones that you can actually see the differences in. Obviously, we had to change something with the tooling there and then this one not drilled all the way through. We keep refining things. Now we get a little bit closer. This was one of the first prototypes, if you will. It works in the DMP freewheel. It works in the Shimano freewheel. Mm, not quite. Well, it turns out that the Shimano freewheels and the DMP freewheels have slightly different tolerances, so then we had to change things a little bit more. But what we were able to do is take a tool with this first revision that did fit on a Shimano freewheel. I knew we had a motor in here that we could not get the freewheel off previously. So I said, because that one is stuck on there so good, let's use the tool and see if it works. It took two of us and it took a cheater bar on the wrench for extra leverage to get that freewheel off, but we were able to break it loose and the tool didn't break. Now that was this version like this, but there were a couple of things that needed to be changed on it. So here's an older traditional design and it goes all the way into the DNP freewheel like that. 
You can put a wrench on it and you can loosen it up. See what happens when you put it into the Shimano, you have a gap here. And if I take a wrench and I try and put it over this, it tends to slip and fit right below that. And so it's just, it's a little awkward and it's hard to hold the wrench in the right spot because it always wants to fall down to the bottom. And that just seemed like a flaw that if we're gonna make a tool, we might as well do it right and get that fixed. So here's our version of the tool. It fits into the DNP freewheel quite nicely. And when you put it onto the Shimano freewheel, you can see that we've left some material so it's fatter, so the wrench can't fall down to the bottom, so you don't lose your place. So not only is that functional to have that small groove right there, but by having the diameter be bigger, we can make a much stronger part. So this part is even stronger than the original, which we weren't able to break in the first place. This is made out of 4140 steel, which has been hardened even before we machine it. So it's a little bit more difficult for us to make, but the end result, you get a better tool that's gonna last a long, long time. And of course, I know some of you wanna see it actually work on the real thing. So here we have the motor plug, slips over. We have the nut, which it slips right over as well. And then we have these two washers. Everything just slides right through. And then into the Shimano freewheel. And then the size of the flats are designed for a 23 millimeter wrench. So once it's on there, you can just loosen that freewheel right up, slide it off, and you could go from an old Shimano freewheel like this one to, you know, a nice shiny new DNP or a new Shimano, but you can make it easy finally to switch these things out. Here's one of the parts being made right behind me. There's one other thing about this tool that I'm also excited about, and that is the fact that, yes, we're going to sell these retail on the Bolton e-bikes website, but if you have a bike business, a rental company, if you need some of these tools in bigger quantities, let's say you own an e-bike company that uses the Bafang 750 watt motors, we will have a wholesale program for these tools as well. Thankfully, I didn't have to do all of this machining by myself. I had some help out here. Jerry Lee has been the one that has been working hard at tweaking the programming and tooling and getting everything set up and running. If you haven't listened to the podcast lately, I just had her as a guest. Now the question is, did we break the tool in the process? <laughs> and we did not break the tool in the process. It was because the one you did bore out and make bigger, that one was totally bent, which I think you yeah. show in your YouTube video. Why didn't we start? Um, like, <laughs> when did we get the program back from Randy? Um... That's a good question. I mean, we, we worked fairly quick on it. It was fairly quick, but it still took like it, two It weeks? took a couple of weeks, couple of I would weeks. say. Yeah, I think you're right. And that was, that was a couple of weeks from basically having a program in our hands and having... All the tools to go. Yeah, basically we had all the parts together. So there was probably a month or more of preparation before that of trying to get the design, find the right kind of tools... And we ran into problems finding metal. Mm, yes, yes, wanted. we did. Make sure to go check out the podcast if you want to see the full episode. If you want to see one of these machined inside the machine from start to finish, make sure to hit that like button. All right, let's show you how this comes out of there. Got a GoPro mounted inside the machine. We start off with a bar like this. It feeds through right here into the machine.
one of the longest parts of the machining time. It has to cut all 12 splines, and this broach tool that moves in and out has to do that 40 times for each spline. If you want to see more about how this tool was made, click that join button below the video. That's where you get access to behind the scenes production videos and also get to provide some feedback and occasionally on a tool like this you might get access to it before everyone else as well. It's done! There's a little bit of cleaning up that happens after that to get these perfect and ready and nice and clean before they ship out to you. But if you need one of these free wheel removal tools, make sure to go to boltonebikes.com. We have a limited supply in stock right now, and we will be continuing to manufacture these, hopefully for years to come. Thanks again for watching another video from Bolton eBikes. If you enjoyed that, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and we will be back to our regular schedule every Thursday next week.